work um, work the application based on that initial input, come back, have the actual quasi-judicial hearing, present the actual evidence upon which you'll make your decision. Um, if, you, if, if the council is in favor of mandating the conceptual process for certain properties, you, you may do so. Um, you know, I, I would like to have an opportunity to tweak some of the uh, criteria. What you don't want to do is, is flood your agendas with Oh, I, you know, I have a multifamily building and I'm, I'm combining four units into one great big unit, so therefore I'm changing the density, therefore I have to have a conception. You know, we just need to think a little bit more about who the, where the, the gatekeeper is on that. You don't want to be flooded with things that, that really don't need conceptual review. But, um, you know, I just wanted to remind you that non-quasi-judicial piece versus the quasi-judicial and the fact that there is uh, supposed to be a pre-application staff meeting that that does address some of those initial comments so that that sh that is on the books and that is how it's supposed to be happening so I uh, just wanted to put all that out there for you to consider does that the pre-application meeting happens before conceptual or no it's supposed to the way the code is written there's supposed to be a pre-application meeting prior to formal site plan review and then the code says um, Prior to submitting the application, and based on what happened at the pre-application meeting, the applicant may decide to uh, ask for a conceptual presentation at the council, um, and then come here and give you that 10,000-foot level. Here, here's here's what we have in mind. What do you think? So that's the way the code is written, and how it's on how the process is supposed to start. So. Okay. And Lance, you guys do that pre-application meeting before conceptual, before we see it. So most of the time we do it, there are a few times that we have not, and it's simply just because the applicant, before they are getting full feedback from staff, they want to see what council says, so they, they just submit accordingly. Um, but historically, we, we do do the pre-application first, and then we do the conceptual presentation afterward. And then they submit for site plans and DRC and everything else that we'll have you afterward. Okay, yeah, I would prefer to keep it the same for everyone and not mm -hmm. in favor of a project or whatnot. No, um, understood. <clears throat> so if we can make sure that's happening going forward, that would be great. All right, anything else to discuss on this matter? I'm good. No. Nope. All right, I will move on to agenda item two. Discussion. What's our direction? Oh. I'm sorry. What, sorry. I just want to make sure um, we know our direction. I think we're all in favor of it. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to tweak it so that we know where mm -hmm. the gatekeeper, like you said, is a good word. Okay. So require it for require for those those areas that we talked about and and with some language uh, clarification and then move forward bring it back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it would remain optional village wide, with the exception of the targeted corridors that it would become a mandatory part of the process. And then we'll, we'll um, look at the criteria and, and what what kind of things have to be brought before you, but. Understood. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, moving on to agenda item two, discussion on agreement for a little league to utilize to quest a park. Jeremy. So this item came to you guys at council um, uh, as, as a presentation. You know, at that time there was still a lot of, a lot of questions, so council directed <laughs> staff to um, ask uh, Mr. Paul uh, Vosey and Mitch Greiner to come back in a workshop format so we can have discussion and, and they can answer some more questions. They are here tonight. I think they're ready to answer any questions. I don't know if they have any. You guys, you guys, come on up to the podium if you guys have any anything you guys want to add to last time or any anything you guys want to present to council. You can, and you guys can have that discussion. Okay, I'll open up for uh, council discussion. Let me pull my notes up. <coughs> you know I got notes. So, welcome, guys. Thanks for coming back. Um, thank you for the initial presentation and even the interest of getting our youth on the fields. Personally, because I do know you guys from around town, you do know that I support our youth. I'm a huge advocate for all ages to be outside and active and being healthy. Uh, with that said, I have spoken to as many residents as I can since your initial presentation. I have also reviewed your presentation on my own time to read it carefully, because last time we did kind of go through it quickly. 
Um, so I could go down a rabbit hole with a lot of little logistical questions that if we were to move forward with this, I would absolutely want the village team to go through and make sure everything's hashed out. But I'm going to start tonight with my general bigger picture questions. So I wanted to ask you guys why Little League? And why do you want to start a whole new league when we have a few existing ones that we can already choose from in the area and this county? Um, I ask that because so many of our youth are already, already involved in those and the fact that Little League is solely specific to baseball and the fact um, we have only a few fields to work with so it's not like we're the only fields in the northern area. So I kind of wanted to feel out what were you guys going for when you wanted to start Little League and not just try to help out one of the existing organizations with structure already put in place. Yeah, I think I answered that a little bit previous. There's there's difference, there's subtle differences to the Little League versus the Cal Ripken. And Little League is the, is the league that I think everything sort of branched out from, but things from pitching distances at certain ages and there's subtle distance or differences to leading off and things that are important to some people that play the sport. So like we said, I mean, we're, there are other leagues around, uh, but there's no Little League, right? And Little League is, is like it says on the patch, loyalty, character, and courage. And so it, it, it's, it teaches, it teaches um, kids, I think, in a different way, so. Okay. Um, so I've been debating, talking with residents to debating on whether or not the village should get involved with a profit organization having the rights to the field versus just partnering with another existing organization getting kids on the field and just having our village team do the scheduling for the fields so different groups ages can use the fields um, when I think about what you said last time you were going to actually develop a Tequesta Little League non prof or 50c3 you have to put all that in place still, correct? Yes. Okay. So if you're going to put all that in place, knowing doing that before myself, I don't see how you would do that in the next two months. I know that was kind of your timeline. And then putting a structure for registration, your fee costs. I was trying to research Little League itself since it's a nationwide thing, and I, I, I'm assuming you're going to be affiliated with them. So I'm assuming they have protocols and stuff already in place so are we looking to be affiliated with them correct yes okay. we'll be a, we'll just as the presentation says we'll be district seven i think it's all right i know i just wanted to clarify because <coughs> yeah. i'm trying to, i don't know too much about little league as a whole so i was trying to educate myself as and, i got to also back. answer your other question yes, yes we will get out there and depending upon how the fields can get moving um one of the scenarios is interleague this year again like we did so that's still under Little League and it'll still happen and then as the fields become available then the numbers change. Okay, I just have like two more questions if you don't mind, Mayor. Okay. Um, so I did make a note. So I, I'm struggling personally at this time giving the future, let's call it, to cross the Little League full rights to the fields and control over who would get to play on the fields. Your presentation mentioned that TLL, to quest the Little League, would get to choose who uses the field if it doesn't compete with TLL. I wanted to ask, what does that mean, compete? Is it a same age group for baseball, or is it baseball, other teams in general? And the reason why I ask is because we do have, and I'm not referencing specifically Cal Ripken, but there's some other smaller entities that you know might want to play too, but we have a senior softball league, and I will fight for those seniors to the see I die. I don't want to see them not have access either. So when you say competition, are you talking about baseball in general or same age bracket? Yeah, we're, we're just like, so. I think, I think what you were mentioning, I'm sorry, was that as long as we're not currently using the field, is that the competition Correct. you meant? Correct. Right. So that's, the village itself. It's not, no. yeah, it's not okay. a, a certain baseball entity that's not allowed on the field because they're competitors when they play baseball I think it's just as long as you the field isn't in use right okay all right and but I'm sorry no, I hate to interrupt because I usually like to kind of just go in order to no, keep it right. smoothly but I thought that you were asking for exclusive rights meaning no one else could play without their permission 
No, we're just simply saying that Little League will be the league on those fields. That, that's what we're saying. And so. So no one else can play. Not, not that no one else can play. It's that that league will go, just like the other leagues will, fall, spring, and summer, right? So they'll go, and then when the permit process comes up, it will, like on the website, it'll allow you to go in and say, hey, we want to use the fields for you know baseball purposes. But anything else, I think that's up to you guys. Okay. That's kind of what I'm struggling with, is the exclusive rights to the fields. I think that's a, a word I don't think we want to get caught up. We're just simply saying Little League is here on those fields. All right. So when I was a kid and I went to the four field complex in Pompano where I played Little League, uh, if there wasn't a game going on, I could go out there and play. And when coaches and kids started showing up, I knew I had to get off the field. It's time for them to Correct. practice or play. That's it, right? Yeah. Or if I, well, but let's take it a step further. What if I am um, I'm a, a, an organization and I'm putting together a softball team and I want to use that field? Um, and it doesn't uh, conflict with Little League schedule. Great. Then I talk to whoever I need to talk to at that facility to set that up, right? And it's all good. Correct. Okay. So I just don't, I don't know. I'm trying to just think it through. Is it going to get confusing on who's managing those fields when essentially <coughs> Tequesta manages the overall park? I don't think so. I think we have a lot of people that are really excited to bring some real money to these fields and bring these things up to speed. And right now there's zero utilization on them. And we're, like I said, it's, it's really not going to be that complicated because we'll have, once it goes and the, and the seasons are set and the schedules and the practice schedules, there will be days and times just like the other leagues. If there's one open, great. We want, we want them to come in and use it because it brings in money to our, our, our league to buy baseballs or uniforms or what have you. So great, please. Which kind of leads me into my last big picture question that I was rocking my head around. Money. I don't think anyone disagrees that a lot of residents want money to be put in those fields so we can get all ages on those fields playing and using them rather than just sitting there for years and years. There is a maintenance yearly. Who would be running the maintenance? Is it on the taxpayers? Because... Well, and I think this was in also part of the question. Will Lily provide maintenance of the fields year-round? Yes, us. Okay. So the other thing, too, is whoever, whether it's TLL or some other organization, I would absolutely would like to see a partnership rather than just giving someone full rights, um, only because we literally just went through a year and a half or so with the residents working on what do you guys want at that park. We spent staff time, money, talking with residents. We took a full vote on a master plan. I have trouble as a business mindset. Why would you put money in something when you know we possibly would come in and start moving and re removing some of that field and even moving some of the logistics of it? And you're asking for FI your contract. I'd rather have a partnership if someone wants to put money in the fields and give us a boost and get them going faster. You know, let's figure out a way to get that group Oops. on the fields to use them since they are forking up money. But again, I'm struggling with giving away the full rights for X amount of years. So, all of I don't want to make too much of full I, know. I mean, rights. I can go I down a rabbit is, hole, but. I think this is, how, see it big, keep it simple, and I want to keep it simple, Laurie. I think it's making this a little too difficult. When we say rights, I mean, we're there as the league, and hopefully what happens is, because it's really the time value money. Right now, there are no kids on these fields. And I personally can't see a reason why to not, to not move forward. So we hope that this league Hopefully the lacrosse turns around or someone else turns around and says, hey, want to go back here and make this piece of grass. And all that does is strengthen the story for the bigger picture, right? It strengthens you. And hopefully when that park happens, right, that's a lot of money. So when that happens, hopefully this lead and what we do is there is a um, tried and true, if you will, right? It just is going to roll into the park. And it might even give you guys a little bit, you know, different ideas as to maybe some design things or what have you, but but we see it as why not? Why would we keep kids that want to participate and can't participate now versus what may happen next year, two years, or three years from now? Right? So we're we're there. No one's gonna know we're there except for the kids that they're having fun. Right? We're taking care of everything. I guess I'm, I, I like I'm struggling with the big picture though because I mean our master plan removes that that one main field that you would plan to use and that's the only field that has lights. Your proposal didn't have an estimate for lights yeah. in the backfield so yeah, who's putting away, in those lights? So Laurie, we, we stayed away from that because 
we can play those games during the day. And so the one field that has lights and balls permits. And so we didn't want to bite off more than we could chew. Okay. But those are, those are all things that, that can happen. So we, we actually said field one and two, um, and, and clearly three is there. So yeah, the only field that has lights because of permitting. So we just set that aside. Okay. I like I like your train of thought of saying, hey, yeah, master plan is great, but w when are we breaking earth, like the ground? Nobody knows when we're going to be moving earth. So maybe, maybe, maybe someone comes in and fixes up the fields and something starts to happen there. And maybe our design plans change because we've got a good thing going now and these fields that weren't in use are now in use and everyone's happy. So maybe things change. So I don't want to restrict anybody from doing anything just because uh, we all approved the, this master plan to create uh, this fantastic field, but you know we're waiting on. We need money from the state, and I, I think those those fields have been sitting there rotting for too long. And <clears throat> if someone wants to come in and pay to to build them and and keep them up and fill them with kids playing ball, I, that's that's a good thing to and me. Aaron, two things. We obviously, I think when Keith gets involved, I mean, again, there's words like. Um, strong words like we're, we're not we're, we're not here like obviously if you guys start to break ground and things like that then that's great because we think that hopefully that will evolve with you guys but the things that we're putting into it can actually be taken back and will come off of your budget yeah right so <laughs> if you want it that way right yeah we could be using those fences yeah, exactly. again right fences you move them and yeah they go all back the stuff, all the things it. that we put up can be moved if it's if it's right. uh, it's taken down. So, Mark, I have a question for y'all. Um, do you not see that what we're trying to do is going to help the quest of big plan? Like that's how I see it. I don't see it hurting the the master plan. I think once you see it start evolving, I think more ideas are going to come up. I think the community will jump on board. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. That's what I'm saying. I, I think jumping in and saying. Uh, let's just get started and see what happens. That's how we build this organically, you know, and, and, and see. You, and that's when and you really start. You'll get feedback. People will show up or they won't. And there'll be that, your answer. That's what this si this says is that it was a good question about max number of kids and and I think if it got distributed, I mean, you know, as we say here, the success is ultimate success is well organized and run. You know, a well organized and run league for all that participate. Right. So if that's 33 kids in the first year, great. As long as we give them that experience, great. We know as we start to, you know, we are pressed for time and the way those things will happen. So as these others start to unfold, like for example, T-ball. Can't put a T-ball league in there until these things get fixed because you can't ask these kids to travel. You can't ask their parents to put them in a car and travel what they'll have. These older kids are gonna have to do because we're a little behind on time. But as it gets set, Right, and the following year, those are things that'll that'll open up, right? So, I don't have any more questions. It's a question. Um, have you guys tried to reserve uh, field space here? No. Why? R reserve it. Reserve it to to be able to start the process the, through the process that we've already have to get time and field space on, on the field to, to utilize it. I think they're unplayable right now they're, for the safety of the kids. Yeah, they're they're not playable. Okay. That's yeah. why we have so to that's have. that's part of the problem is you know, the front field, some very nice sod, it's uneven. There's there's a whole bunch that's going on with different things with each field. No, so, I understand the yeah, fields so aren't we, playable. I get I we totally just get that. Knew that if this sort of if this went the way it should, that you know, that'll all So if we got the field ready, would you feel comfortable at that time then to go through the process of utilizing it on our, the current steps that we already have, trying to reserve field space. Yeah, but I think what we're trying to do is, yeah, I don't think if it's one way or another, I mean, we just want to make sure that the league is set and, yeah. Do you, do you need dedicated fields to have the league? Yes. If you don't have a dedicated field, yeah, the you, Little League will not allow it. You won't you be able have, to get the yeah, license. You have to meet certain parameters and then you have to have you know the practice, yeah. So, and is there but, is there a certain amount of like field time that is required? No, or is I think it just it's very like a, similar? I mean, look. Does every does every little league? I'm trying to get at. Does every little league have a contract with a municipality to 
use those fields? Yeah, I mean, there's, yes, or, the answer is, well, not a contract. I think, the, I think it's a matter of the fact that the fields are under you guys, which is under the state. And so if they were somewhere else, I think we'd be talking about, hey, let's put the league here, right? So I think that's generally how it works, right? It's, are you, it's, it's fields. Are you speaking about, like, rules or more of, you know, you have to practice this amount of time, you have to have this many games, they have a lot of rules like that. Uh, Little League does. You have so sure. many games you have to play to become an All Star. You know, similar to Cal Ripken, uh, but there's a lot of differences with Cal Ripken as well with distances, ages. No, 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 I get that. You know, all that. So yeah. yeah, there are rules set in place. Like this baseline has to be this far. Right. You know, you can't have a, a 20 foot backstop behind home plate. Right. No, no, I get the know, the field and, restrictions and all so that yeah. stuff. What I'm trying to get is field usage. Like, do they? And you do a dedicated field that you have access to for four hours or 16 hours for every week? I think at some point, Kyle, that they would, yes, if, if you're putting a league in place, that yeah, they're going to want to see that you have the ability to support. Right? I, mean, I, so right. I think that would be. But, but wherever the fields were, you would be approaching them about, hey, let's put the league here. And, and all I'm getting at is I see that we have probably about 17 different leagues that use those fields. Right, right now, at some form or another, and how do we decide which one gets all the rights? And, and I don't know that we've talked to all 17 and say, hey, by the way, we're looking, thinking about doing this. 17? Um, yeah. Um, uh, baseball? No. I mean, Good Shepherd Episcopal School has used it. Backpacking event, rec center, uh, um, creator game. Uh, another Rob baseball, Jupiter Senior softball, soccer shots, Jupiter Rays, JTAA. Manners lacrosse. So I think all those things would fall up under, hey, we're not using it, great. Um, we're, we're, we're absolutely open. It's a baseball field. Um, so you wouldn't mind if we remain, if the Cuesta keeps control of who uses those fields then? Um, Let me interrupt. That, that would Sorry, be. this doesn't jive with what is on your slide. It says no other baseball leagues practice right. tournaments so, on field without agreement of TLL. Right. TLL will operate year round. Like surrounding league, leaving little downtime. All proceeds from approved non TL field permit rental use, et cetera, to benefit TL. So I just want to be fully transparent because I feel like what is in front of me on my document that you produced and what you talked about are not no matching. So that's I just want to be to fully transparent league. here. That's speaking to a baseball league. Yeah. Right. That language is to a baseball league. Right. So Little League would be the league on those fields. That's what we're saying. And then anybody else. Right, I think we were asked, were well, we going to take care of the fields, maintain the fields? And so I think if we be honest, <laughs> when you start doing that, like obviously we have liability, mm -hmm. right? And so um, that's a question for us is you want the public out there playing, and so how does that all fall? I don't think that's for here. But, you know, clearly what we're saying is if, if we're able to, you know, because we know our schedule and we know what's going to happen, it's easier for someone to say, hey, we're a kickball league, we want to come use the field. And if we're not using it and it can generate money back to the league, great. Right? Show us your insurance and that way we can have it. And then, you know, you like so, but if someone wants to ride a bike out on the baseball field, right, I don't think that was kosher anywhere, right? Gardens, Jupiter, it just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, not most people get out on the fields anyway. So, right? So that's, that's what we're talking about a league. To answer your question, it would be impossible to run a functioning Little League if they didn't have rights to the fields to make the schedule. Now, Saturday at 4 o'clock, fields aren't being used. Jupiter Softball can roll in and, and do what they want. You know, yeah, they would have rights to that field, but it would have to be time slotted. And so that's what I'm trying to get. How much of those rights do you need? Like, like how many think, days, how many I think hours? To make it successful, we would have to be able to make the schedule right. for coaches that need to do something different maybe a night. You know, they might need to switch a practice this time and that time. I mean, that happens daily when, in the league sports. I mean, life happens. And there's also a lot of time where the fields aren't being used. So that's where they could come in and use the field at that time. And Kyle, right now we have that slotted on a website that we're building you know, out. It says permanent fields, right? You go there, boom, daytime, boom, it's open. Great. Okay, I'm good for you. Well. 
Do you want me to add, or you want me to wait till after you? I have. Um, I'll wait. Yeah, but several questions. I might get a little in the weeds. So um, the you reference the north, and, and this is more education for me, trying to understand the little league process better. So there is an existing. This would be in District Seven, correct? Correct. And is there how many little leagues are currently in District Seven? I think um, four or five. But the every one everyone, is North could, Palm Beach. everyone in the in the district could have it. Every everyone could have one. Okay, but the closest one is in North Palm Beach. Correct. And yeah. you you referenced on your slides that um, they're played at Juno, so a park in Juno Beach, and that those fields need improvements. Have you approached them no. to do improvements there? Why why us versus Juno? Cause because we're closer, right? The bridge is getting ready to close, and all the kids are in this area, and so they were going there to go an hour now to play games, and so that was really the reason. So it's. I a, think it's you a were asking for a five-year agreement, and the yeah, we just twenty months. So that, we we just put that there because given the amount of money that we're getting ready to put into these fields, it's pr it's considerable, right? And so we wanted to be able to get this league going where we could hand the keys off, and then. This thing would continue to, to survive and go on in, into the you know the big into the big picture, right? This thing is is off and running, right? Because it's going to any kind of agreement or contract with the little league to start a new league. Yeah, as soon as we get the ability to have the fields, then we'll go through the process. We, we talk with them. Hey, we're going to come to you guys. We're going to pull this charter together, and we're going to start moving forward. So, could you not get that approved prior to the improvements? No, because what's the name? What's, it's got to be a 501c. You have to have an address. There's all kinds of little things that have to happen. We have to be a 501c before we can take the donations, and so those things all roll in sequence. How long is that process? <sighs> Could be really quick. It is a process. It, 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 well, I'm just I'm just trying to understand the time. I, I think you wanted the process. fields by February, and so, yeah, so we, we would we'll, be committing to this. We'll be there by February. I mean, I don't know if it's like really easy to get a charter from the yeah, Little it'll, League. It'll and be it's there like by February, Molly, but it may not be that we may just be having to fix a field of practice and still do some of the traveling for this first year and then fix them and be available for the for the following year to say, okay, we're here now, right? So now now we can we can do this because of the way the time goes. So then I, the timing is just, I'm trying to understand the timing and if, if it doesn't work out, like, with it's gonna work. Out. League, yeah. You don't get your charter, whatever it's called. Like how, what happens then? Then nothing venture, nothing gain. If we don't get our charter, then fields are as they are, and with the improvements you made, we would just get them back. Well, I mean, we're we're, we're not gonna they're not gonna yeah. build the fields before they get correct. Oh, That's I all. thought you said the improvements had to be made before yeah, you yeah, get the charter. No, they're no. The biggest holdup is not getting the charter. Don't have a field. You can't charter a league without space for them to play. Right. And, and, and that's where... And the coordination of how it's all going to play. Okay, so you need to secure a league, the fields from us, but the improvements don't have to be made yet. Correct. So once we get that, things will start to fall. Okay, and I think you were looking at three teams of 10 to 12 kids. Is that right? 12 to 15. Yeah, so it just, dep it just depends. What we're saying is we, we saw success getting the, the major age group set up where it starts to fill and, and then come back. So yes, what we're saying is hopefully we can get those different three different age groups. Correct. So how many kids that live in Dequest would you expect to join the league? Or I guess how many kids in Dequest are in the North Palm Beach Little League now? I mean, I think, I think once it gets out, I mean, I think there's some subtle differences and, and I'm not, it's, it's a hard question to answer. Right. We're not trying to. What was your question? How many kids? How many kids in Dequest? Are in the league now, and how many would you project to be in if this were to get approved? How many would be up here? I mean, I know what I think our max would be with the field space, and we would be around 140 to 150 kids, and that'd be the greatest thing ever. But I think that's gonna happen, probably not that many, but I do see us having about two teams in every age group yeah. very soon. Yeah, which would lead to the area what we already had in the Slides in the interleague play with Hope Sound, Boynton Beach, uh, Delray, and North Palm. If North Palm would ever get up and go, 
they uh, they really don't have any teams in their league. They just kind of use the fields to use the fields. I don't know. You know, we could get into travel ball and rec ball and all this. I mean, what's going on over there is a lot of people are using the fields, saying they're part of the little league, but they're basically just playing travel ball. So kind of goes against what we are trying to do, which is a community rec league with the little league. Okay, and um, from what I understand, there's no one else in the area um, that has exclusive rights to any fields like this, and. I know Keith has maybe, I mean, is this classified as a public-private partnership? I mean, from the te technicalities of this, I am curious about. Keith, so this is why people hate lawyers, because you've got <laughs> a very pastoral Norman Rockwell, let's fix up the ballparks and have Little League and it'll be awesome, and then the lawyers come in and, and, and right. blow it up. Um, the, the biggest problem is you've got a park that Tequesta uses and maintains that's located in Martin County that's owned by the state of Florida. So you got every level of government involved with this particular park. Um, you know, if Tequesta, we have a long-term lease, it's our responsibility to you know, maintain and use the park. If, if Tequesta wanted to spend the money to upgrade the ballparks, you know, you could certainly budget for that and go out to bid and hire a contractor to fix up the parks and, and, and the ball fields. And then if you wanted to have Little League, then, you know, we would work with Parks and Rec and come up with a, a use policy. I mean, the county has a use policy. I'm sure there are other Little League organizations, other, you know, Palm Beach Gardens has a pretty nice facility. They, I'm sure they have use policies and you would do that. Uh, there's been, you know, plenty of discussion about whether or not to budget and spend that kind of money on parkland that we don't own. Um, so the law has a thing, uh, a, a short-circuited procurement policy and process called a public-private partnership, which this is 98% a perfect project for a public-private partnership. In that case, a local government like us could receive an unsolicited proposal to do a, you know this type of thing. We'll we'll fix up your ballparks. We'll um, uh, maintain them. We'll, we'll we'll do all these things. And then the public-private partnership statute provides for a comprehensive agreement that spells all of this out. It spells out how the private entity is going to pay for it. What kind of you know they, they may get private financing. Um, it spells out what happens when uh, the work is done and how it's used and how it's maintained. It, it covers everything you guys have been talking about. The one problem is that the statute requires the village to own the project and the property, and we don't own it. We lease it from the state. Therefore, we either have to have the state involved in the public-private partnership. I don't know that that's possible or not. It, question that needs to be asked if, if the council wants to proceed down that path. Um, so so that, that, in my view, is the, is, is the biggest hurdle in the public-private partnership <coughs> opportunity because we don't own it. We aren't contemplated to ever own it. Um, the second issue is, and, and you've all been talking about it, is who gets to use the facilities. I mean, these are Right now, in my opinion, under our management plan with the state to give anyone exclusive use to those fields for, for any period would probably violate that, that. This is a public park. It's a public facility. Not to say that we can't create policies that regulate, you know, how you sign up to use it and how that all works because we certainly can. Um, but you can't just hand over exclusive use to, to any particular entity, uh, not only at would that probably go afoul of our management agreement and lease with the state? But you know, the public-private partnership statute also talks about um, equal access and paying the same. You know, similarly situated people paying the same fees and having um, same opportunities for access. So all you know, 
to me, that's a secondary issue that you would probably be able to overcome. The, the biggest issue is that we do not own it, or are not going to own it. Um, so you'd have to get the other levels of government involved. And I, you know, again, I, I haven't explored that. Don't know if it's a possibility. So since public-private partnership has that issue, you know, then you get your, are back to all right. If you want to do this, then you need to spend the money and, and go out to bid and hire a contractor. You know, unfortunately, there are uh, very specific procurement requirements that local government has to have when it's spending public dollars, and we have to follow those rules or we get in trouble. Um, so there, there is absolutely nothing in our procurement policies or, or any statute that I'm aware of that provides for this sort of in-kind uh, work in lieu of and doing it that way raises other issues, um, liability and insurance and could, proper construction and oversight. So it's just, you know, without going down that rabbit hole. Uh, those are the issues that I see. Uh, I know there was some discussion about having something online for the 2023 season. I, I, in, in my view, uh, you, you'd be halfway through December before you even got into the procurement process. Even the public-private partnership statute, when you get an unsolicited proposal, you still have to uh, advertise in the Florida Public Register and say, hey, we got this unsolicited proposal. And is there anybody else out there who would like to also make a proposal for us to look at to do the same type of thing? So that would have to happen. And it's, um, you know, there's, there are time periods, minimum I think is three weeks, maximum is four months for the time period that you have to give uh, for other potential proposers to throw their ideas into the ring. Um, so again, it, you know, no doubt it's a, it's a great idea, uh, but as local government we are bound by certain procurement rules and there, there are just a lot of issues that we would need to work through depending on what direction the council wants to go. But those are the main issues that I see right now. Okay, thank you, Keith. So I'm just gonna kind of go through my comments. I don't need any responses, but I kind of just want to un understand, like if we do go down this road, it's not like, okay, approve, we can start the work tomorrow. There is a process that we're just bound, we have to follow, required to follow. So um, it does get a little complicated, you know, um, with that kind of stuff. So I'm just throwing this out here so everyone kind of, knows the rabbit hole in my mind is going down. Um, but for the agreement, I mean, do we need to, like, are there special insurance requirements? Does the league indemnify the village if anything happens? Um, you know, who maintains the fields if it's not a success before the contract duration? If we get funding for our plan, can we terminate the contract, you know, um, in convenience of that? So those are just questions I think we would all have to sit down and come to agreement on. Um, you know, I'm curious how the permit process would work, hiring, um, bringing in if any items need to bring up to code, you know, is there any um, Martin County Health Department or state DPPR license you have to get if you're selling drinks and food from the concession. Um, <clears throat> the phasing schedule, you know, some of the stuff, like the scoreboard, I think that would need a permit maybe, and you're, that's in phase one, so there's just questions about the scopes with the phasing. Um, I would like a better plan of the field. Um, there was a generic plan on your slides, and I think just things like the um, bleachers, the proposed shed, that's not really laid out, so it'd be nice to know where those are going. And then I would like clarify the size of lacrosse field, because I've seen several different sizes for lacrosse field, and we do have people that use lacrosse fields now. So I would want to make sure that they don't get kicked off, so we would need to confirm which size lacrosse field is correct. Um, maintenance, you did bring that up, but is it just the fields or if there's going to be other wear and tear to the park besides just the fields? Are you guys going to cover that too? Um, and then, you know, I, I mean, I kind of agree with Lori that we went through a really um, thorough and long and in-depth process with our residents uh, on the vision for not just Aquesta Park, but other parks in our area. Um, it was very well attended. We got a lot of a lot of great feedback, and it is hard. I do value, I do see the value in getting use on the fields because we don't have funding for that plan. There is um, a bond that might get approved 
in by council this month, and then if that gets approved, could get approved by voters, we could use that money towards this plan. Um, so it, it is hard to go against what the residents really supported the vision for, because in this seat, to me, it feels like a slap in the face to them. Like, oh, we asked you for all of your time and got all this great feedback, but we're not going to do it. Um, so that doesn't sit well for, with me. Um, that kind of wraps up <laughs> my, my uh, uh, top concerns and questions. I, I, <clears throat> I'd just like to say, let me finish with this. First of all, the master plan, it included baseball fields. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, maybe they were in a different spot, but people still want to see baseball. Mm -hmm. um, if the only, if the biggest issue is uh, us not owning it, which it sounds like it would be, I hope we can figure out a way to get an answer on what we do from there, uh, or, or about that, uh, sooner than later. Um, I, I know what you guys are trying to do. You're trying to make nice baseball fields for kids to play baseball on in Tequesta, and that makes me happy. Uh, it makes me sad that you guys are going to walk out of here shaking your heads, going, what, what just happened? And I'm trying to figure out the same thing. It's not lost on me that you're trying to give us money to build new baseball fields, and I, I appreciate that. And like I said, I grew up playing baseball, and I played on uh, a, a baseball field that was home to, back then it was called Corey League, um, and men and women's softball. I mean, every night there was something going on, and they figured out how to do it, all different leagues, right? That's what the baseball fields are for, not just for someone to use once in a blue moon for a pickup game. Let's get some structure out there and uh, a, 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 real, um, a real league. I, I, I hope we can figure out how to do something like this. And, it, you know, I should have known. It's just it's really disappointing that it's, this is like such a red tape disaster. But don't give up. I know this is a, a punch in the, in the gut tonight, but I hope you guys keep going and, and stick with this. And that, that's all I have. Let me kind of just add it real quick to it. Um, I think it's up to us to make sure that we get the fields up and going. And if the fields were up and going, then there's a process for, and we need to create a good process to get usage to those fields. And, and maybe that's something that, as a council, we should talk about having a written process that is very clear. Um, if you don't already have it, I don't know, I just haven't seen it. Um, to be able to utilize the fields. And we just need to get the fields up and going and then, you know, start small in that aspect where if you have certain amount of times where you can get access to the field to get those one or two teams going, great. Let's, but it, to be able to, you can see as a state owning the, the property, we just can't come to any agreement. We're just, they're not gonna, not gonna happen, so. And that's kind of where my headspace was with giving TLL the fields and Mr. Stone's comments earlier were exactly what I was asking Jeremy at one point um, when I go over our agenda, make sure I'm understanding the backup correctly. If residents are excited about baseball, because Aaron's right, I mean, that's why they chose to compromise and we have baseball fields on the master plan. They're not against having baseball, but we had to fit a lot on that park. So from our end, that's our blueprint. So anytime we get funding, we're gonna go by that blueprint and maybe phase in different spots. So I asked Jeremy, if we're getting a lot of people interested in getting on the baseball fields particularly, would council have a discussion in the near future on if we get funding, do we pick that phase first? Kind of like what Mr. Stone was saying, do we get them up and running and then we can start scheduling and then we don't have to deal with the legal red tape. It's just, it's much like we um, do with the rec center, which I wanted to bring up because it made me think of it. Uh, Mr. Stone was here when we did the rec center as well and majority of that council as well as residents were very hesitant about having private funding and name rights and all that kind of stuff on that public rec building and so yeah this for me is a public park for rec space i have no problem with leagues and teams using it i just want to find a simpler way to do it so everyone has a chance to schedule whether you're first in the door or you donate money and maybe you get one year first dibs or something, I don't, again, that's all something has to be worked out, but I'd much rather see it public space and then have all leagues welcome. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, and I mean, for the record, I do, I see, and I've said this, I see the value in those fields being used and not sitting 
And, um, and I'm just going to be completely honest. I think um, it's hard for me to make a confident decision right now on this because I feel like some of the answers tonight have been kind of vague. So it, I think if there was maybe some more concrete answers to some of the questions, I would maybe be a little more comfortable in making a decision on this. Um, so it's, I'll just say that. Any other questions or comments from council? I'd like to see the council put together or have the staff bring together a usage plan, plan. on how to, how to get access to the different facilities that we do have throughout the village. Okay. All right. I will open the floor for public comment. Um, Marsha Nielsen, 94 Beachwood Trail. Um, just a note of caution, please. Um, if we're, you're talking about funding through that bond issue that you are putting out there for acquisition of park funds, it would be very disingenuous to use that money for um, baseball fields. You're putting it out the way it's worded as acquisitions, not maintenance or so if you want an extra bond issue or you don't scrap that one and put it out there that you're going to go after a bond issue to do the to do to Cuesta Park, then at least be honest about it. Thank you. Any other public comment? I'm Adam Logan. Hi, uh, Adam Magan. I am the executive director of the Jupiter to Cuesta Athletic Association. Uh, a lot to unpack there. I'll do my best to be brief and just share a little bit of information that I have. Um, so Jupiter Tequesta Athletic Association, obviously we, um, we run a lot of the recreational and travel sports in the North County area. Baseball in particular, we have about 400 recreational players in the fall, about 600 recreational players in the spring. We have quite a few parks that we use due to the size of our numbers. Um, I will say in regards to Tequesta Park, we have used it in the past, but not much in the last few years due to the condition of the fields. Uh, we've had plenty of conversations with village staff um, to see what we could do to, to get the, the fields up to par. Then I saw the master plan conversations happening, very excited to see the direction that the village is, is going with the master plan at Tequesta Park. It, it'll be amazing. Um, in particular to Tequesta Park and baseball usage, just this past fall, we were looking at our numbers, looking at the vision for the spring, and we anticipate growth. Uh, what that means is we're outgrowing the facilities that we currently have access to in the spring. We would love to use Tequesta Park. In similar fashion to what uh, the Little League proposal is, JJ may, may be able to help you know, fund some improvements to the park to get it up and playable um, so we can have some of our overflow baseball take part at Tequesta Park. That would be the goal. Um, not looking for, you know, com private act or uh, complete control of the park whatsoever. Um, I think we would just kind of fall in line with any other usage that we've had at Tequesta Park. We put in our request to the Recreation Department, it either gets approved or if there's another group in there, it gets denied. But we've been very, worked very well with Recreation staff with uh, finding some space available. So we'd like to keep that, that same method, you know, not looking for anything uh, in, in addition to that. Um, just a couple, couple other items to, just to touch on. You know, right now JTA uses Tequesta Park occasionally, again, for baseball, rare, but we, do, we have in the past, baseball, softball. We have used it in the past couple of years for some soccer clinics and lacrosse, a little bit of lacrosse over the past couple of years. I would hate, you know, I'd love to see the park improved, but I hate to see, you know, our use go completely out the window or have a, a much tougher time utilizing that space if another group came in and had sole use or I'd have to go through a different group rather than the recreation department that we that we follow right now um, it's a lot it's you have to you know you have to be careful with the, the you know what goes on Mitch made a great point with what's going on in North Palm Beach right now it has been taken over by by travel baseball teams um, it has and it's it's a shame that it has been that way um, recreation has to come first recreational sports has to come first that's that's how JTA operates um, that's that's you know, I think one of the reasons why we're so successful in what we do, why we get so many families. Um, we love to bring those families up to Tequesta Park. We hope we can be a part of a solution, we get those fields up, up to par in any way that we, we can help. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Hi. Jessica Namath from 20 Shady Lane. How are you guys? 
Um, I was curious, I know last time we had asked if we know how many residents specifically are interested or play baseball, and then also how many games, like if there were any traffic studies done, if we know the impact of traffic, or how many games or cars would be expected, how many parking spaces would be utilized, do you know that kind of stuff yet? Yeah, I think our anticipation was using the spaces that were allotted. Um, all of them? I think there's 110 spaces, I don't think all of them. Um, these practices and games are, are phased, so I, I would not be sitting here telling you that we've done traffic study or know exactly how many uh, people would, would, would come together at one time. We don't know that yet, you're saying? Okay. Um, because I, I was just curious, and I remember a, a while ago when Mr. D'Ambro was actually the mayor, I think, we came in and there were talks of making Tequesta this, like, or the, the park, a sport destination, a sporting destination. And uh, residents came in, my father, you know, who's a professional athlete and was drafted to play professional baseball and ran a children's camp for over 45 years and is all four kids learning baseball and playing baseball. And I think, again, we're not opposed to any of the teams using it to practice or whatever, but I think residents came out and spoke loud and clear. And I appreciate Molly and Lori touching on this, but I mean, it was overwhelming that residents didn't want tournaments. We didn't want to be a, a sporting destination. We want to continue to use the recreational facilities, of course, and we want them improved. But I mean, my daughter, who's about to turn 12 in December, is just now able to kind of ride her bike out and around. And I don't know how many people are going to be coming in and driving through our small village. And that's overwhelmingly what the other residents said. We want the fields, we like the things, but we don't want a league. We don't want this to be a sporting tourism destination in our small town. So um, nobody is not endorsing sports. We're not trying to support them. We just certainly don't want tournaments here on weekends or whenever they may be and the influx of traffic. And I think we spoke about how far away people would be coming from. And I think that I drive past JTAA. It takes me like less than 10 minutes driving to Limestone on the back roads every single day. They're not that far. And when my daughter played softball, we had plenty of fields around locally to utilize. And I just think we should be improving our fields for the residents and for the things that we residents told you all and, and conveyed during those surveys. So I please ask that we stick to the master plan and not go the private route of giving you know, exclusive use to one league. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other public comment? I, I just want to. Yeah, I just want to add la last thing. N nobody's using our baseball fields, okay? Even if we built them, people don't go out and don't go play baseball. Kids who play baseball, you know what they do? They all wear the same color shirt because they're on a team, okay? That's how you play baseball. A league doesn't mean we're not going to be the new destination. When you have baseball fields and football fields and basketball. Uh, basketball uh, areas, whether it's uh, inside or, or outdoor courts, uh, you have leagues and the, the, they teach kids structure and how to play and they're coached. So we're already, the master plan has two fields and everyone said that's fine. Those fields are meant to fill with kids and adults who play sports, and in, in particular baseball. So, you know, having a league doesn't mean that there's going to be a sports complex and this is going to be a destination. I just, I, I I feel like people are having a hard time um, understanding that. Just every 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 field in, in every city has a league where they have teams and a, and, and a local business on the name of that T-shirt. Uh, it's nothing corporate. It's just how we grow up in America. I'd like to see that continue somehow. If we can make that happen, that'd be great. Okay, thank you. Any other council? <clears throat> so, what's the the path forward? I mean, is there a consensus that we want to move forward with the current plan? I know you, throughout putting together use, um, other types, maybe use agreements. Yeah, no, I'm not in favor of doing an exclusivity contract for one entity. <clears throat> I mean, I flat out was kind of already on the path of asking Jeremy, do we have a cost estimate of what council could look at if, if we wanted to discuss starting that phase on that park um, what would it cost how do we get the money where do we get the money 
And if we find that solution, then we can start scheduling. And I was kind of already getting down that path. Um, but obviously, that's a council discussion if we want to choose, if there's a high demand for those fields in particular to get started and there's use for it ready to go. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know there are questions about uh, contract and like at the, what happens at the end of five years. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'd like to see those fields built. Who builds them? I don't know. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm not, I, I don't know these two gentlemen, um, I, but I know baseball and I know that if we got stuck with Little League, uh, it wouldn't be a bad thing. It's, it's not a corporate entity that people should be running from. So I, I don't know how we get there, but I'd like to figure that out somehow. I just wanted to say one more thing. Um, I will not feel good walking out of here with the use of the word exclusive. Um, so if I did that somewhere, I apologize. But I think as Adam will tell you and as other people of other leagues will tell you, they play Cal Ripken. There's no other baseball league that plays it's Cal Ripken. That's what I meant. Cal Ripken and Gardens, Cal Ripken. That's all I meant. Not exclusive. We're, right? We're, we're coming saying, hey, you come here, you show us you have the insurance. We have insurance. The league has it's a $1 to $2 million policy. It's under their umbrella. You guys will be named. A lot of things that you said, no vague answers. We have the answers. So not exclusive. We're, not, we're just looking to get the kids on the field and you know, we have seven fields, eight fields with the other leagues, and we have zero for the league. So give the league a chance. Character, courage, loyalty. Well, and, and just so we're clear, clear, the league can start there, just follow our current process. I'm sorry? No one's stopping the league from starting now. Well, yes, it, you cannot start, you can't start Little League without being a 501, right? Well, that's not, so, not us. We don't create those. Right, right. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's just everything that goes along with it, bringing them sort out the speech. You said safety issues that are there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a safety issue right, right. now. There's, and that's why I said time. in the beginning, if we did the work to help get it field up to where it was safe, we can't you can still follow our process and still get yeah, access to the field if, if that's, to start if that's it. That's the way it went, yeah. That's sort of and I, I, no one's against that. Yeah. I just, the word exclusive, I just wanted to correct. Yeah, no, appreciate that. Um, so I'd be in favor of yeah, coming up with use agreements. So probably I think, Jeremy, you guys would be taxed tasked with that and then we'd probably have another workshop for it. Okay. Everyone good? Thank you. All right. Thank you for your time, guys. All right. Moving on to item, agenda item three, discuss recreation policies and procedures. Greg, you are up. Um, before we get into that, just a couple we do have people that use the fields. So just so that we're clear on that. The other thing is that we, uh, and given the previous councils and the current council, we worked with what we had to work with to get the fields where they're at right now. Um, so, uh, and let's use the pickleball courts as an example. Great example. So we took $130,000 and we put it into a pickleball courts that weren't even being used at all. You have 100 people per day using the pickleball courts right now, just from that simple little renovation. We could take the, the fields that are at Tequesta <coughs> Park right now and just make small modifications to bring them up to where JTA can use them. I mean, we're talking about infield lips cut them out, resod them, and fill in the clay. We haven't added fill to those clay, to those fields in years. We haven't verticutted them. We haven't uh, aerified them. There's a lot of things that we haven't done to the fields that could bring them up to playable condition. And there is, uh, there is a baseball group that does use the backfield. And uh, senior softball does use the field. When Jupiter's fields are closed down, senior softball comes over to Tequesta Park. You know, and Adam's right. Some of the, the reason why Tequesta Park, it's kind of been the redheaded stepchild over the last 21 years that I've been here. And so, you know, if Adam needs an overflow of field time, he calls me and he says, hey, Greg, do you have fields available? And I give him what's available. 
So, you know, we work with all the groups. And the other problem that I see is that if you take uh, a field and shorten it, what happens to lacrosse? You know, so, and we have a huge lacrosse following. And we, we do have lax maniacs that are two village residents that live in the country club and they have over a hundred kids in their program. So um, I just wanted to throw my, my, I'm at that park seven days a week. I know that place like the back of my hand. I know who's coming, who's going. Same thing with Constitution Park. I live here so I have nothing else to do with my life. <laughs> <laughs> it is my, that is my life. It is my life is what I do for a living and I enjoy every bit of it. So, you know, whatever I can do to offer programs and services to everyone is what we as public servants do. Um, anyway, <clears throat> on a positive, on a really good, good note, I think the, the rec center, we've been in seven months of operation and I think we're going really uh, extremely well. Um, we uh, get a lot of comments from residents that come in uh, the comments that we get are a lot of positive and then there's also a lot of negative and they most of the people that we run into they really don't want to come to a meeting or they really don't want to send an email because they feel like intimidated so we are the front load so we get it um, in our face every single day Tessa probably is the the shining light of the front desk and she's there during the prime time when people are actually voicing concerns and things like that. So I think everything is going extremely well at the rec center. I mean, we're, we have great staff in place. Um, it's, we're getting a little bit of turnover, but we, I think we're meeting the needs of everyone. Um, the, the only thing that I see that, uh, that I can, and it, these are small, small items like with changing policy would be going from the $2 to the $5 uh, for the daily fee. Um, it's not a huge jump. We, we did have comments from residents uh, that when open gym, and I'm just using strictly open gym because that's the main use that we get from non-residents. Um, so that would be a, the small change uh, that I would recommend. And then the other thing is that I need kind of direction on and, you know, um, is how do we handle nonprofit organizations and groups that come in? Um, my recommendation, and I, I think Jeremy and I have spoken about this, is that um, is that we treat them like a resident. You know, if if you live in Jupiter and you're a nonprofit organization, we give you a resident price, um, and that obviously most of them are all tax exempt anyway. Um, other than that, I, I really don't have a lot of, like, you know, um, anything really negative to say. I, the building has been a huge success. I mean, I'm very proud to work there, and I'm, really, I'm happy to see young families coming in. Our programs are doing really well. Um, our events are, like, you know, uh, very, very popular in the community. They're very well attended. Um, and uh, that's, that's, you know, and we, we're working out some kinks with the building right now with Doug. And um, other than that, uh, things are going really well. So, yeah. I think the only other one, just the third bullet point on here is, I know JTA is here, so we can oh, yeah. uh, uh, address it, is their use. And we talked about this early in the basketball or in the design stages is um, they do have a request in to use the, the facilities for basketball on Saturdays. I think we've uh, at least thrown out an alternative to their hours of, of letting them use it for a half day on, on a Saturday. Um, and so that will be another, you know, if we can get direction from council on that, that'll, I'm sure will help them. I, I know with basketball, at least my conversation with JTA, you know, facilities are always hard to come by, especially with indoor facilities. And so um, I think that was always the intent with, with council, unless I'm incorrect, was to allow them to use the gym for games at least partially on on a saturday and i've talked with greg and we feel like we can accommodate at least a half a day and not 
not upset a whole bunch of residents and, and lease this first year and then we can see how it goes and maybe we can expand or maybe we need to contract a little bit or, or not offer in them all in the future but i think this year would be a, a good thing so that was the third bullet point yeah. I just didn't want no, to jeremy's exactly right you know um we've only been open seven months and um adam uh has been uh he's very flexible he's like greg you know if we can only use the half the gym then you know we'll just move kids around we'll put a certain age group you know um and he's he's very uh respective to the fact that we we want to be able to have the gym open for our residents that are not there for basketball so you know we can shut down half the gym and we can still have something to offer the resident and then we can also have something to offer the youth program so yeah um uh yeah jeremy's right <coughs> Okay, thank you guys. Any council comments, questions? Shut down half the gym and you're running basketball? Are you talking about running short ways? How would you shut down half the gym well, when it's you only have a basketball to, game going? It was the three to five. five, uh, and six years. five oh, and so you years. are running the... Five and six years, yeah. Okay. And we have we have the curtain that we can draw. Yeah, I, I we know. we can lower the baskets and, you know, we can kind of cater to that younger that younger age. Oh, no, yeah, that, that's, I was just confused about yeah. dropping that curtain when you're running full court. Yeah. You can't do that, obviously. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I think with that one, if you guys just give us some flexibility, uh, as long as nobody's against it, we'll let Greg and Adam do all the fine details. Unless there's any objection, we'll just we'll we'll work out the schedule. So yeah, I have no problem if any organization wants to come in and ask to use some of the gym space, much like they do for the fields. Mm -hmm. If they're asking for me, they are trying to partner with us and being respectful that it is a public rec facility as well. So I greatly appreciate to hear that. So far, the ones that are asking are trying to be respectful of that. Um, how is the gym floor wear and tear going? Good. Okay, so yes. it's holding up nicely? Yes. Because I know those can get costly for schools, so no, as long that was as on my radar. We have a great cleaning company now. Okay. We have a machine that cleans the floor, and as long as we stay on top of the maintenance of it, that's a multi-purpose floor. Okay. It's not wood. We don't have to worry about stripping it, and you know, so it's it's going to last us for a while. So. Okay, yeah. that's good to hear. Yes. Because I know a lot of schools will struggle with that maintenance yeah. later down the road. Yeah. The $2 to $5, I mean, I guess I'm okay with that. I would recommend not going above five. Um, I am a prime example. I will advocate. My my oldest does have a best friend that lives literally one house over from the Tequesta line. Hopefully they'll annex one day, but that's another conversation. But I think $5 a day, if he went twice a week, three times a week, I think that's doable. But if you started going to like 10 and stuff, that's going to get a little heavy just to shoot hoops. Well, we still have, um, we still have our, uh, it's actually, you know, if you purchase the three month or the six month or the, so it, it actually still becomes advantageous to get the longer, like we just had uh, for sure. three or four people come in and wanted uh, a six month just to play pickleball. You know, so For sure, um, but I'm yeah. just using it because there are some kids too who <clears throat> get wrapped up in the busy family schedule. With they're in a sports season, they might not right. have as much free time to utilize that three months. They might just that's where I'm getting at. Just sure. I just I wouldn't favor seeing it go any higher, really, than five dollars sure. for right now. Sure. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about aside from the gym, the activity rooms. Yeah, are they being booked? Yeah, the the whole the whole uh, at youth room is booked by an outside contractor. Mm -hmm. okay. So she has uh, I think twenty two between twenty two and twenty four classes that are happening, and she's doing birthday parties. So it's booked. Okay. And as for the adult side, we've adult we've side. had you know we have tai chi in there, we have yoga in there, we have Zumba getting ready to start up. Um, I think Tequesta Pines just had their, I hope everything went okay. The yeah. HOA. Okay. <laughs> so we just had their meeting in there, and we have some other things coming down the pike, too. We, we are going to be welcoming uh, all the managers from uh, Palm Beach County, uh, which is going to be uh, a big day to show off our facility. And um, Jamie, give you a little bragging. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's okay. not slammed where we're, you but know, progressing. turning people away. Okay. Uh, Good Shepherd PE class uses our gymnasium, and they've come to me about a mommy-daughter, a daddy-daughter dance. And okay. so we've got... Yeah. Okay. We've got definitely. What's the resident fee again to rent the multi use room? Like if I wanted to put a meeting there for something. 
Yeah. Big room is 98 small. It's like because we can switch. We so can forty-eight, take, ninety-eight. Yeah, you yeah. Can so take you take that half. room and split it, and there's a cost if you want okay. the entire room or you just want half. So yeah. for nonprofits, you know, if it's a big organization, let's say they're doing a donation of collecting goods or something, they might be able to front a non-resident fee. But if it's a smaller local nonprofit that just wants to do like a half a room, they might not have such excess funds floating around. Um, what would we charge them? So in the old building, we did have. We did have layers for um, a, a pricing system, I think, right, for nonprofits in our old building. So okay. it was, I think, you know, it was twenty dollars for okay. you know. Because I know our permit, the small our permit the process too, we gave them um, a discount as well. So yeah. I was just curious because I know not every nonprofit is large and has excess funds. So I just want to make sure because we have a lot of sweet local nonprofits that want to maybe come in and use the room for something, but. They don't necessarily need to be talking out like a hundred dollars. Yeah. So I just want to put that on everyone's radar. I'll uh, if you just make sure if I would like to see it, just make sure we're being courteous to them. Sure. And make sure you know they live here, so they want to use the room. Yeah. But it's going to get costly for them. Yeah. And I always support donated funds going to a better cause and just expenditures. Yeah. Save the table plate money. I just I just think that it should be for free because then you're opening. No, 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 up. but just not like a hundred dollars. But a fee of of reason. Um, is totally doable. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> that uh, little basketball league of five-year-olds, is that space going to cater to the whole league themselves, or is, is there enough space? That would be the goal. Uh, we're finalizing registration this week, so we'll know exactly the number of hours we need. Uh, last year we used five hours on a Sunday. We're looking to get away from the Sunday use and, and hopefully use the rec center on Saturday. You know, if we can fit in the four hours, um, that'd be great. If uh, there's absolutely no way, I mean, tonight, we'll have that discussion. Yeah. But it'll be the entire five and six role league. Okay. I'd like to see some flexibility just if it's one, one extra hour to hit the, I'll have the whole league there. I think sure. that'd be great. Sure. Yeah, it's not asking a lot. No. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm okay with the $5 fee. I think that was it. All right. Um, I'll have to say, uh, I have only received rave reviews from residents and non-residents on the rec center, and, and it's a great job, and everything you guys are doing over there. Um, I'm good with all the recommendations. Just, uh, I'm not clear for the GTA. Would we, do we have an agreement written up for something like that already, or is it an agreement we'd have to write up? Or, I mean, we just talked about this with the previous mm -hmm. people, so I want to make sure we're being consistent there, too. So Keith has put together something <coughs> many months ago. He probably don't even remember, but he did. Um, <laughs> so we, we would have to just adjust it, um, tweak it a little bit, and but we, we, we have a pretty close agreement now that we can put together. just basically draws out, you know, liability, you know, all the legal jargon so yes we're not very far off on on an agreement like that okay yeah molly it's um it's something that we should have probably had in place already uh and uh keith has put something together um and that's something that we would uh, obviously bring back to you and negotiate uh, something with the jtaa and um you know where they could possibly contribute to the village at some uh, some way or another. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other council comments, questions? Nope. Any public comment? We love the rec center. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Greg. You're welcome. All right. Moving on to the final agenda item four, discussion on section 10-4, keeping of animals generally, and section 10-10, raising or boarding animals or fowl prohibited. So good evening. This is uh, an item to have a discussion if uh, the council wants to amend the amendment. So I'm open for any questions. If you guys recall, Mr. Godmaker, James Godmaker brought this up um, at a council meeting, I think back in June or July. Um, you know, he asked for council consideration at that time. You know, we, we just said we'd workshop this, just do the workshop, you know, workload, and you know, with everything else going on, it's kicked it back a couple months. Um, I did uh, let him know that we were that we were having this this meeting discussion, um, but he said he had a he had a college class, so he was unable to come. Um, I got that message um, within I think yesterday, um, so. 
Um, it's open for discussion. Any direction from council you want to give on this? We provided a, a survey of the cities. Jose's uh, team put together uh, uh, all the cities that have it or don't have it. We have a sample ordinance um, that goes with this. If you guys choose to go down that route, I think staff is. Well, I know the staff is not recommending that we change change what we do with chickens at this point. My recommendation is not to change anything. So. The First of all, hi. We never get to see you. <laughs> it's it's to what else is going there. on? <laughs> <laughs> um, has this been? I feel like this has been discussed before. <clears throat> not when I was here. It hasn't. It hasn't. Oh, not okay. like officially. Okay. It's come up. <laughs> it's come up, but never actually a workshop. Okay. So council comments, questions. How, how did staff uh, come to uh, the idea that we should not change this? What, what were the because the um, right now I've been here. Almost seven years, uh, we don't have any problems. So, if I change this, you have the potential to create problems with noise, smells, and all that. Right. And that would be very difficult to, to enforce if we allow it. Yeah, if you do a, like a Google search or, I mean, just a search, you'll find, um, you know, you smell, you might bring in any other animals, um, you know. There's in the ordinance they have to clean it so many times. Well, how do you enforce that they're cleaning it or not? Um, you can't go in their backyard, and so then you start getting it's just a smell. I uh, say noise. I don't know the noise, but I know I know there's been bobcats out there. I mean, so the bobcats gonna eat the chickens? I mean, you know. So I don't I don't know. There's I mean, but if you read all those articles, there's there's a lot of concerns that we really don't have a problem. So what problem are we trying to solve today? And then you open the door, okay, chicken, what's going to be next, goats and cows or whatnot, so where, where do you draw the line? So. Do we have, and my question to you guys, is there multiple people that want this? Maybe other than the one person that came, has anybody, you know, to counsel? I mean, that would be the question I'd ask for yourselves, but I mean, we'll, we'll take whatever direction you want. Go ahead. Do you want my country feedback? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as a country family, I grew up in the I'm very familiar with the chickens. Me too. And they can be messy, but very. they're no more messy than if someone doesn't pick up after their dog in their backyard, which can be a foul odor and flies and this and that. As far as wild animals coming in, I mean, we have people that have outdoor cats too, and that's always a risk. I mean, we've had losses in our, even our neighborhood to coyotes of cats being, yeah. Um, <laughs> there has been, in nearby neighboring areas, people will have chickens. They do find that routine where they put them in the coop by like 7 p.m. so that way they are guarded from outside, outside animals. I do know people in the northern county area that have tried to have chickens. They are super cute and fun, but then they realize they are a lot of work and they are routine because of that and so if you really don't have the time to dedicate it to it, it can just become more harm to the animal than anything. I'm not necessarily against having chickens, but I don't see a problem right now that we're trying to fix. And I would love a pygmy goat. So I mean, if this opens the door for a pygmy goat, you know, Jose knows I've been asking for my pygmy goat. I could walk down Golfio for years, but again, I don't see the problem, but I'm not against chickens. I can go either way, but it definitely has to be done correct because it is an animal. You know, it's not just a, a rabbit, I know, is another one people get, and they're like, wow, that's a lot of work, yeah. So I think there's a lot of education if people wanted to even get chickens. Well, I mean, it's the same with dogs yeah, and cats totally. and anything else. You get it, and it may be tough. But you asked, and what's the problem we're trying to solve? I, in my view, we don't allow chickens, right? Right so now, we So we don't. have decided that there are no chickens allowed. We've decided that having, a chickens is, having chickens is a problem. That's why we've said no. So we're not trying to fix a problem. I'm trying to figure out why we've said all these years, what are the factors that have led to us saying no chickens? Mm -hmm. And it's smell and noise. What's the noise? Just the yeah. clucking? Because yeah. I've heard them. They're not, if you only have even three, it's not like they're clucking all day. And you don't have the rooster, because they still lay the egg without the rooster. It's just the hen. Well, um, it, it will come, you know, with a, with a noise start with the, with the rooster start crawling, singing. I mean, my dog you know, barks, and, too. And, and the and neighbors it's... sit in the backyard and the pool don't want to hear that noise. I mean. But there be no rooster. This is the biggest request. That yeah, not, like not. No, no, no rooster. No, there's a, mis there's a misconception that roosters come with them, but that it doesn't. 
So I but we do anything you want. So that's that's why you, you want to have an ordinance. Eh? I did ask Jeremy. You do it, but I did ask Jeremy. I think last week. You know, how does legally does it work? Let's say the village allowed it, or any any municipality allows it, and then there's an HOA on top of that. The HOA says no, so then no check. Well, correct. Yes. So each in order to do this HOA, order, they, they're gonna have to apply for a permit, and we have all kind of regulations. And, um, they had to, uh, you know, because the majority to, in, in order to obtain a permit, you know, they had to go to homeowners association. Of course, it's just super fun. Uh, you know I'm, I'm sure Tom Raffo would not approve <laughs> uh, that. So well, wait, wait. So you'd have to have a if if we did allow chickens, they'd have to apply for permission. Yes, if, if, according to the ordinance that, that we provide you, the if we if we piggyback. Out of that ordinance, yes. I believe they need to come for a permit and there's only one neighborhood that doesn't have a annual inspections and a lot of regulations in between. The reason why you do that, Aaron, is just because I mean if if there is an issue, it gives us a chance to revoke that permit. So if you know somebody's complaining because the smell is just getting so bad and we, we get that, it'll give us an opportunity to revoke that permit and and, and have some enforcement. And so right. that's why we we government it up a little bit. See, that's what I'm saying. It, the question isn't what problem are we trying to fix. It sounds like we've got a lot in place in case there are problems. So why not allow the chickens to show up and see what happens? I mean, if we've done all this, you know what I mean? I think the ordinance lays it out pretty good. I mean, they say just chickens and roosters. They define how many. This says five. We could allow three. I mean, I think the least has to be two. They have to have a companion. Um, it, they have to take certain um, educational classes and have to provide a certificate with the permit. Um, I do see it being a code enforcement, you know, I'm mm. not going to say nightmare, but it's going to be more work. Um, like, yes. do you do inspections just once a year, every six months, like that kind of stuff? Um, but it is very popular, you know, um, for people to have chickens. And the, the, the Volusia County is, I didn't look it up, that's like Daytona is, or where... I was trying to think, like, these zones, are they comparable they to... Are, they are t uh, throughout <laughs> Florida, I would say maybe 30, 35 counties they're allowed. But remember, some of the county, they are Okeechobee County, oh. in the middle of the well, state. That's what I was asking. Yeah. This specific uh, ordinance, Palm I Palm Beach giving... County are allowed in a specific district, right? Not in all districts. So we have to right. keep that in mind. So we don't have that here in the village. We don't have... The specific ordinance that was provided as an example, it was for Volusia County, and it references certain um, zones which are outside of the agricultural zone. So I was just curious. So if you're like, gonna are those allow, equivalent to what our zones are like? Yeah, if I mean, you're gonna allow, say, an R1, R1A, so then they'll be they not they not be able to do it in commercial to, uh, mixed use or whatnot. So yeah, that's something you can come up with. It's in there too. I noticed that example. It has you have to have X amount of space for them, and so yeah, it's really yeah. detailed out there. Um, so that's why I say it's definitely a, a code enforcement. <laughs> and not only that, so now that they have to build a structure, you know, what's that going to be? Are they going to build to code? We got winds, you know. We had to deal with 170 mile an hour winds, you know. What does it going to cost? What th th this might be a little little slightly off topic because it's not chickens, but it's animals. What's the process? We've had we had it years ago, and I don't know if they're still here. They had pit bulls, and the pit bulls would get out all the time, and it would freak everybody out. And we had neighbors complaining. I know animal control gets involved, but that's yes, an animal that is. Thing. Yeah, police department handled those. The, the, okay. the dogs, not us. Because that becomes a nuisance. Yes, that would be the PD. That's that's not us. So I'm not going <laughs> to defer that to police department. I'm going to speak for them. So. I think you were hearing those pit bulls used to get out. <laughs> What, what was the incident? I'll talk to you later. I do think, I was curious, like, what would they attract? I know a lot of people worry about them attracting things. But what would they attract that we don't see now? I've seen rats in the neighborhoods. I've seen coyotes in the neighborhoods, bobcats. Like, I feel Where like you live? everything. I have <laughs> all of them. The early morning walks with the dogs. You'll yeah. see some, some pretty cool stuff out there. So I'm talking, like, before the sun's up. So, um so I think maybe it wouldn't attract things we don't have. Maybe they would attract them more. Um, I have heard from people, I have friends that have chickens, that their chickens have actually, they kill the rats that get into their <laughs> their coop. So so I don't know. It's, like I said, it's, um, there's a lot to consider. My biggest thing, I think it's like kind of a code enforcement nightmare. Um, so, Vice Mayor Stone, we skipped you. My apologies. That's okay. I, I just see it as keeping um, 
of animals and generally are, are, are section 10-4. Um, it says possess and maintain as a household pet. So I am okay if we allow chickens as long as they stay in the house. <laughs> <laughs> like the birds. Building the house. Yeah. 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 Yeah, hold on one second. Is there any other council comments no. or questions? Uh, no, I I don't care. <laughs> okay. I was right. just gonna say I've seen Can like you come up to the podium please, oh, Officer David? Yeah. And this wasn't about I was just talking about the um, the things that they can put them in, the coops, I guess. Right. I've seen like you can get online even and they actually are intended to move, like roll so that the grass underneath, I guess, doesn't die. Mm -hmm. You know, you can move it. So as far as being able to move it, I guess maybe they could put the chickens in the garage if there was a storm or something. But I, I mean, yeah, I, and I um, think that this came up in our household during the pandemic. We were certainly interested in being able to have our own eggs at home when it, there was shortages of everything. Um, and, you know, we have a very large yard. Um, so I think depending on the space, you know, I, I don't know how it would work because I know chicken do need space, but like you said, maybe not very much. So um, personally, I would be interested in having a regulation on how many and space or something, you know, but I, I would be for trying it. <laughs> <laughs> you, any other council comment? Or um, public comment summit. Hold on. Uh, Mr. Bradford had his hand up first, so we'll go for it. <laughs> so I'll go in order with the hand up first. <laughs> Thomas Bradford. Um, so, I don't know where to start. Um, <laughs> municipalities traditionally do not allow the keeping of non-pets on private property in the city. The only time historically that has been backed off of is in the Great Depression when everybody was going down the tubes and they allowed chickens and even my family in the city even, I'm told, even had cows and built a barn on the lot that they had next to the house in Alabama. Mm -hmm. and so that, that's the only time. I mean, it's Pandora's box if you allow this to happen. It's a mess. It's ridiculous. And nobody's even mentioned bird flu, for crying out loud. You don't want that in your backyard. You don't want to be next to that somebody's backyard. And, you know, as Marsha will like this, as president of the <laughs> Tequesta Pines Homeowners Association, speaking now for them, we recently changed our uh, uh, governing documents to address the thing that we had with the village so that we had to put notice by way of a sign and those used to go on the right of way so we amended that and I can tell you speaking for myself we do not allow fowl and poultry or goats or anything like that in the pines and the fellow who requested this lives in the pines so he's not getting it come hell or high water <laughs> if I have anything to do about it so please do not go there I just wanted to add one comment I, I don't know if anybody's aware of it but the first five years that I spent working here uh, seasonally we were trapping coyotes mm -hmm. And so when you say, what is it going to bring in? The chickens are going to bring in the coyotes. No, well, they're already so here. if you're a I've homeowner recently, and you so. wanted, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're inviting those coyotes back to your property, we finally chased out about a family of seven coyotes that were on the Seabrook lot when we cleared up the Seabrook lot. Hmm. But they're all over the neighborhood at nighttime. Mm -hmm. They basically eradicated the uh, feral cats yeah. in this community. So that's what it will bring in, the coyotes. And for fun, I've been bitten in the head by a coyote, and I don't no, prefer right. them to be in this neighborhood. Yeah. Not here. <laughs> it's a whole other story, I'll tell you later. <laughs> you had a comment? I'm kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm sorry. Pat Watkins, 167 River Drive. I have to support Jose here. This is a nightmare that you're opening with this because you allow the chickens, the next person wants the turkeys, the next person wants God knows what, and right in our own neighborhood, do you really think this is a good idea? I mean, just think about it. There's already, I've seen a few running around on Fairway North from once I don't know, but I just don't think we need to open this can of worms here in the village. I would caution you not to. Thank you. Thank you. 
think that's all the public. So, Marsha, do you have a comment? <laughs> She's good. Okay. Any other? Yeah, I, I, I said, you asked if everyone comes. I said I don't care. What I mean is I don't care to make this a big deal. I'm not going to go to war over this. But, um, you know, we've heard lots of uh, comments about what could happen. I have a feeling those are anecdotal. Are they from experience? Have you owned chickens and you're explaining to us how it was when you owned them? Or this is just what you've My heard or what you think? My mother-in-law owned them and hated them. And they're yeah. vicious people. My brother-in-law had a degree in poultry and they will peck each other unless you They do. You, you know. them. They are not a sweet, you know, you don't want them. No, they're not. But what Mr. Bradford said is that's why they allowed them during the Great Depression, not because they're comforting animals, but because uh, food was expensive, money was tight, and they, they lay eggs every day. And when I go to Publix and buy uh, uh, a dozen organic um, vegetarian eggs, they, they cost eight bucks, you know, so. It's not uh, guaranteed you'll get eggs. I'm sorry? You're not, you're not guaranteed that you'll get eggs. Uh, well, <laughs> I, 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 think it's, I think it's worth the chance if somebody wants to take it. Um, and I, I, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean, times have changed. People are, it's, yeah. it's a trend, it's becoming a trend. People want to be more self-sustainable yeah. and um, and it is, you know, a monetary thing sometimes. It's cheaper to raise chickens and lay your own eggs and buy them from the store. Um, I will say, I maybe if we get more resident requests on this, it could come up again. I don't know that at this time I would want to move forward, but I wouldn't say like completely nix it. And if it becomes, you know, we get more requests for it, maybe discuss it again. I'm not in favor. Yeah. Um, I didn't mention bird flu because it would be like a pet, which is why I did mention that. Please, people, if you ever consider chickens, no matter where you live, they are a lot of work, much like the rabbits, and then you end up giving them away. So just, it's a commitment, just like any other animal. But I'm not opposed to having chickens. I'm not, not opposed to changing it either. I'm fine the way it is. I don't feel like we have an issue, but I also understand that it could be successful, but it does entail a lot of things in place and a lot of accountability. Real quick, I know that we're not necessarily we're solving a problem, but are we solving a need as well? Well, that's it. I would, I would much rather have right. multiple like people asking for it than yeah. just Correct. one person. Yeah. 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 Okay. Or two. Even two. No, I wasn't asking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just, just give you, I just want to give you credit, so you get credit for and that. Hopefully, we don't go into a great depression. Yeah. To miss you, so. Okay, so I think we'll table for now, but if we okay. start to get more resident um, input that they would like to see, to be able to have chickens, I think we can bring it up again. <laughs> All right, and that is the end of the agenda. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Can I add something real quick? Absolutely. Um, I would like us to talk about um, vacant uh, land where there might be a home that has been purchased and then torn down, um, and there might be land banking the, the land itself. Um, in, in what kind of condition or having a code or something that says, hey, that how that land now needs to meet some standard. Yeah. Um, or to like, get to work or yeah, or, if, or if we're not going to work, then let's, let's at least yeah, make it to where the neighbors across the street aren't complaining. That's a great idea. Um, there's well, stuff out there. I'd like to look at it. Yeah, I don't disagree, and I know we can't really talk about it tonight, but um, I mean, I mean, I don't know if in our code. But I know in other municipalities, it'll be in the permit or their temporary control plan. Like if you, if it says for like X amount of time, you need to seed it and grass it, so you're not having dust issues and stuff like that. So I think if it's necessary, we can workshop it. Or maybe Keith, is it okay if Jose comments on this real quick, even though it's not on the agenda? Very briefly, I mean, I don't... keep it brief. Okay. Well, <laughs> if you want to, uh, to come up with an ordinance, uh, you better in the colony. They have a good ordinance that we can pick it back from that. Okay. We can take a look at that. All right. So, so yeah, can you add it to the workshop list? Thanks. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 There used to we be one. one. I know. PD used to pick it up all the time. Lori, there was a headband in the neighborhood, and it was one of those supposed to be miniature. Well, it's it's going to get finished. I've seen pictures. I've seen pictures. And it was really fun.